everyone, I'm Tony Damien. And I'm Andrew Rich. And welcome to another year of Himalayan Bites, backed by popular demand. Uh, Tony, that sounds a little misleading to me. Well, potentially misleading and deceptive, and who better to ask than a competition law partner? Linda Evans, welcome. Thanks very much, Tony. Glad to be here. Now, today we're going to uh, talk to Linda about merger authorisation. Linda, when we get our M&A deals cleared, it's normally informal clearance, but there's also the possibility of merger authorisation. Indeed, there is. It's a relatively new process which allows a transaction that has public benefits um, to be able to use those public benefits to offset any competition concerns. And what are the main differences between informal clearance and authorisation? Well, there are four main differences. The first is the availability of public benefits that I just mentioned. The second is the much more public and transparent nature of the authorisation process. The third is the statutory timeframes. And then finally, the nature of the review process. Shall I tell you a bit about each of those? That would be great. Terrific. So as I mentioned, public benefits sometimes arise out of a transaction. And in the informal clearance, you can't use those to offset any competition benefits. Authorisation is used where you do have those and they can be used to offset competition concerns. Secondly, you have a much more public process. In informal clearance, you know something is happening and the ACCC is looking at a matter and general timelines, but you don't know the detail. Here, the application must be lodged with the ACCC and goes onto the website, and interested parties have to have their submissions go onto the website as well. You can, of course, protect confidential information and that can be removed from the register, but generally it's a very transparent process. Then thirdly, there are statutory timeframes, which is quite different from the informal process. And then finally, the review body. In the case of informal clearance, it's a review to the federal court. Um, and in the case of authorisation, it goes to the competition tribunal. Uh, and Linda, what's, what's the ACCC's view on, do they like the, the authorisation process or not? Look, I think there are pros and cons, and it depends upon the particular case. Both the ACCC and parties who are involved in merger authorisations will tell you that they are very intensive data-driven exercises, so they consume a lot of resources, and that's a, a very important consideration if you're thinking about a merger authorisation. And have we seen any um, appeals from, from authorisation determinations? Indeed, we have one running right at the moment, Andrew. Just before Christmas, the ACCC delivered its decision rejecting Telstra and TPG's spectrum authorisation agreements, and they've applied to the competition tribunal, and the competition tribunal is going to hear that application in May of this year. Well, merger authorisation is an interesting area, it's an important area, and sounds like it's one to keep an eye on. Thanks very much, Linda, for coming in today for the latest episode of Himalayan Bites. In the next exciting instalment, we'll be talking about exclusivity in the context of the draft guidance note that's been issued by the takeovers panel. That should be very interesting. Look forward to seeing you all then.